Hey, what's going on? This is Book Me or Not podcast, and today we got the whole Eyes Glue production. They came through, chop it up, man. We're gonna get some gems from them. We're gonna learn about their business and how they built it from ground up. So, without yeah. further ado, thank you all. Got the fam here. <laughs> <laughs> but if y'all want to introduce yourself, you can, you know. What's going on, everybody? Robert Slocum, CEO of Eyes Blue Production. This is my beautiful wife, Jasmine Slocum. Our son, Roman Slocum, starring in our latest film, Slime Race. Slime Race. <laughs> and, uh, I, was, I got to be, you know, come through and check y'all out on Slime Race, man. Um, it's, I ain't going to tell y'all too much, but it was, hey, you don't want to miss out on it. Like, like, just the action on it, the rawness, like, I really salute what y'all doing, man. Uh, I admire your, your work ethic and how y'all work as a team. And, you know what I'm saying, that's why I really called y'all here, you know, for this podcast, because I love y'all work ethic. I really admire how y'all independently, y'all ain't waiting on nobody. you doing it yourself, hey. and like, yeah. So, doing the film independently, um, how is it that you have to, you know, not wait on nobody? Like, you know what I'm saying, tell us how it, how it goes. Doing it independently where you don't have to wait on nobody, you just hit, hit it and you just go on. Like, you ain't waiting on nobody, you just doing it. Well, it's like with any other thing, I'm, mm. I'm a hustler. Right. And I don't mean that as a bad thing because not mm. all hustles are bad. Mm. You, you just you can't wait on anyone because right. if you wait, you'll be lost. Mm. So I just utilize, like, I used to sell cars. So I utilized my tactics for that. I knew I had to network, get to know people. Um, just become resourceful and barter, pay, whatever it takes to get it done. Like I'm, I'm pretty well rounded. I think I'm kind of known in the city anyway. So I can go to establishments and you know build rapports with owners and you know maybe they'll cut me a nice discount yeah mm. you can use my facility or they, some have blessed me and let me use their places for free right. because they they see the vision and you know it the key thing is surround yourself with people that believe in you or you know i don't like to be called a dreamer because i'm doing just mm, a bar <laughs> yeah, right I'm, yeah. I'm doing the work, so I'm yeah. not a dreamer. I'm doing what I set out to do. Yeah, yeah. Just be be around innovative people. Yeah, yeah. You know, ambitious people, yeah. rather. Yeah. And um, tell us how it is, important it is to have your wife on help you on this, these projects and having another person and not having it on your own self. Like, how is that? You know, let us know how that is. Man, it was... Uh, heavy weight lifted off my shoulders when mm. my wife came into the fold because mm. I've been doing this for like 10, 12 years. Okay. And, you know, I've, I've had my bumps in the road. I've mm. learned a lot. Right. And, you know, when you do an independent film, you don't have a, well, the way I've been doing it, the gorilla way, you don't right. really have a budget to pay yeah. PAs and right. all the, so you have to wear many hats. Right. And so when I brought my wife into the fold, it just made it a lot more easier and things flow. I, I know how competent she is uh -huh. and, and she's a go-getter. She's intelligent. She's the female version of me, but okay. I, I'm more educated. You know what I'm saying? Up, yeah. So uh -huh. I... I don't have to look over her shoulders, micromanage. I right. can trust her. I, I know she says she's going to do something right. or attack a task. She she's right. going to do it. Yeah. And then so she, like reflection, reflection job. Yeah. yeah. She more aggressive than that. <laughs> I thought I was aggressive. She all like, hey, hey. hey <laughs> people see big two thirty eight over yeah. here, but they don't be feel they feel <laughs> wifey. Hey, she, like, oh, she, she, wifey she coming. <laughs> Hey, let's go. Let's get done. Hey. Like, man, I, 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 was, I was on the scene. I seen her. She like, hey, like, get it done. Huh? She was out there in, in the witch. She's like, hey, what's up? What's up? So, yeah, yeah that's we film in the midst of pandemic. So, well, okay. it, so she's um, making yeah. sure everybody's COVID compliant and everything. Right, right, I mean, sure. she just do everything. Every, places where I lack, right. she makes me stronger. Right. And things I don't even think of because yeah. I just... I have that get it done mentality, mm -hmm. that go get a mentality. Right, right, so right. she balances me. So yeah, balance. 
like strength and weakness, you know, you know what her weakness, you know your weakness, and by y'all knowing each other like that, it's, it helps balance it and you can get things done, because she know like, okay, he gonna forget to do this, let me make sure. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Let me stay on, so yeah, yeah. So for you. Mm -hmm. uh, let us know where you from, man, and um. Born and raised here in Atlanta, Georgia, man. The west side to be exact. West side, it's on four. It's on one. Yeah, um, what does the West Side of Atlanta mean to you? Everything. Everything I am, you know, I have to attribute to that. I love Atlanta mm -hmm. as a whole. Mm -hmm. This is my city. I love my city. Mm -hmm. But the West Side made me. And I can't take that from them. Like, mm -hmm. all the way even from my elementary school on up. Mm -hmm. Like, in Peyton Forest mm -hmm. was a rare gym. Mm -hmm. Like, I went to school with a, a lot of prominent families like okay. Dr. Martin Luther King, his great nieces and nephews, okay. Andrew Young, his lineage, uh -huh. you know, the Bronner brothers, all their kids and grandkids and stuff. So um, prominent businessmen, like no. I had a strong sense of self because uh -huh. actually I was a rarity. You know, I came from a single parent household, uh -huh. but you wouldn't believe being on that side of town all the, well, majority of those kids came from two parent households. Right, man. right. And so that school gave me a strong sense of self, and I would always, <laughs> you know, say, pay, pay homage to pay for <laughs> Yeah, my, my, my elementary made me because Adamville yeah. Elementary made me because I just learned a lot of lessons around that time. And, right know, around the corner. Around the corner. <laughs> yeah, the same. Yeah, it made me because that's, that's my years, you learn the years, the elementary. So. You know, just being around the people, you know, in the neighborhood or just going to school with everybody just really made me. Like, the lessons I learned, you know, made me tougher. Like, you know, you got to be missing. Right. It's tough to be, I grew up on the west side. Oh, so yeah. That, you got to be able to handle yourself. You got to. So, yeah, um, most definitely that. Let's talk about, let's talk about your, um, your next project that you're working on. Um, we're currently working on, um, Wife, you want to key? Oh, sure. I mean, I didn't want to jump in, you know, <laughs> where I wasn't. We have a lot of projects, actually, but mm -hmm. we're trying to put them in order. Uh, so we have quite a few. He mentioned in midst of pandemic, mm -hmm. we're finishing Slime Race. Um, he has one called Buggy Love. Okay. Um, we're still trying to get 96 kind of going. He's also writing a phenomenal, like almost, I wouldn't say biopic, but um, somewhat, something similar to a biopic okay. uh, for Tommy Duncan of Jet Doc. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, he's he's the creative on those okay. things. Yeah. <laughs> and so I just try to realistically get a schedule of what we can do in a year, okay. um, year's time. And it's always, you know, oh, we want to film everything. <laughs> well, let me ask you about Jet Doc, because... I see y'all, uh, I see it up and down Instagram. Um, yeah. I didn't exactly know what it was. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you explain to us what exactly Jet Doc is? Yes. Um, it's a telehealth platform. Okay. Um, it is black owned. Okay. <laughs> I okay. think those are important. My too. guy, yeah. Tommy Duncan, man. Y'all yeah. go follow him. Okay. Look that guy up. He partnered with Dr. Jackie Walters and um, Rick Ross on it okay. to basically bring health to affordable health affordable issues. health to communities okay. mm -hmm. and so um where people are generally afraid to go to the doctor okay. um, because they may not have insurance or mm -hmm. um don't have you know the type of insurance that will you know really allow them to use it okay. um, this is another opportunity that you know everybody has their phone in their hand all the time all the time um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's a doctor's appointment at yeah. your fingertips yeah it's yeah. right there in your phone you can download the app you download the app for free there's nothing to no cost to download the app mm -hmm. um there's a subscription that you can get for ten dollars a month and that covers your entire household okay you can get yeah. up to five people if i'm not mistaken in your household on the plan and then um it's twenty dollars per visit if you don't have the prescription uh the sub subscription. subscription so it's like okay. you know a win-win if you don't if you're not sure about it you can just get one doctor's appointment if you test you, it out yeah instead of mm. jumping to urgent care and having to spend mm. a larger amount 
Um, if you need prescriptions, you can get up to 85% off prescriptions and things like that. I know Huge, that's, man, that's really important for elderly when you just have routine medications that you have to take um, without having to go into facilities. And then in the wake of COVID as well, um, I think it's important to kind of stay out of crowded places if it's not necessary to go in there. Right, right. Um, and so they have board certified physicians that can mm. help you kind of. Over 500? Yeah. Mm. That's the much need in our community though. So that's, that's a good thing to be involved with, like anything that's helping our community. Right. Like that, that's big. Yeah, yeah, we started off just, you know, we, we met him because he was at um, Jackson Memorial okay. Church. Yeah. Him and Rick Ross, they made the, you know, they gave Christmas gifts to the community. I'm like, mm. and I was up there, well, we were up there volunteering mm -hmm. and helping out because we would touch, like, this is my neighborhood, this is where I grew up. Mm. I know how much this means to the kids. And it wasn't like no little family dollar tours or nothing mm -hmm. like that, nothing against family dollars. But this guy was giving out big screen TVs, mm. bikes. Right. All kind of, he made sure a lot of kids had a nice Christmas, mm -hmm. and I was enamored by him. So mm -hmm. we got to talking, and he found out I was a writer, and I, you know, I shared some of my work with him. Mm -hmm. And the relationship matriculated from me just writing his story mm -hmm. to us becoming friends, family, and now I'm a brand ambassador for Jet Doc because okay. I believe in that and what yeah. he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, us as men, we don't go to the doctor like we should oh, mm -hmm. so right, right. black men at that so i would say the black community as a whole has like a right. a mistrust of you know right. physicians and you know western we, medicine and rightfully so yeah. i mean there's medical insurance it's, a, it's pretty much been a scam they they take yeah. advantage and then right. the maternal death rate for black women and as i'm sure you've heard is higher with mm -hmm. you know we have yeah. a lot of doulas that can support that you know what i mean and so yeah. it's important to have um, I think to create the trust that is lacking okay. um, in our communities and get the health yeah. health care that we need that we're we're not going to seek or going to grab when we need it. Oh. Right. Shout Ooh. out to Jet Doc for, for that man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah big song. <laughs> you know, big song. Too, man. Yeah. What does '96 mean to you? The year '96 mean to you? <laughs> it's the year I moved to Georgia. Oh. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yep. I was young. <laughs> I grew here. Yeah. <laughs> 96 is the year, in my opinion, that Atlanta got on the map. Okay. So yeah. it's a culmination of yeah. so much. Like, people love Atlanta, but they don't know how it became the powerhouse yeah. that it is. So I always wanted to tell that story. And so I just started writing. Um, first-hand experiences that I've witnessed myself. Um, I've interviewed a lot of prolific people mm -hmm. that were key players in this. And the story centers around Atlanta, but it's from the lens of everyone. Okay. So you got the political aspect, mm -hmm. you got the law enforcement aspect, the hustlers aspect, street hustler dealers, everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm telling the story how in the late 80s, early 90s, how we got into it with the Miami boys when they came up here and they tried to take over. Yeah. I, mean, I know you're familiar <laughs> with that, coming See, from my side. That was when my uncle got killed in Atlanta. Mm. Mm. Yeah. That's so, real. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it was mm. a little bit, you talking like 85, 86, around that way. Right. So I, I up. three years old around the time. Mm. And I had to, you know, you know, adjust the timeline a little bit, but just. I'm starting from 1990, and the show will end in 96. But I am covering a lot of stuff from the 80s and all. Like, I mean, like I said, the Miami Boy War, yeah. the forming of the Red Dogs. I'm covering that. They will to jump out on you. Right. <laughs> we actually know gonna... one. We know one. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know that. I mean, I grew up in the church with him as a child right. and when I met you knew Robert. One of the most popular ones, but yeah. carry on. Bro. Yeah, he um you know, we met. I didn't know any I was kinda ignorant to it. So we met and he's like, You know such and such and I was like, Who? You know, you're talking about Mr. You know yeah. man, he was like, You don't even know him And I was like, I do, I've known him my whole life. 
You know, right. you know I'm his brother of such and such. I know right. I'm as a Terminator. Yeah. Man, that's what we called him in the street. He's so down I, to earth and chill. I know from where I'm from. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. I don't know what it looks like, but I know that name. <laughs> the yeah. Terminator, yeah. Everybody know who the Terminator is, yeah. man, from the Red Dogs. Yeah. But I mean, like, we, classic level. Yeah, we're talking about the foreman of the Red Dogs. We're discussing, um, I'm not going to say any names, but, you know, little city councilmen mayoral beefs with some gangsters mm, okay. prolific gangsters and business owners entrepreneurs you, yeah. you get my dream yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna touch into that tap into that too then um another part of the political aspect you know it's some great stories like i didn't know like certain da's were from here and you know they're on worldwide news now cnn and everything but they have like great stories like mm. heroic stories so we definitely want to tap into that as well so mm. it just it's a it's a beautiful story man and it's centered around an og i know okay. you know he's like my godfather um name ali baka he okay. was um I know ali. well i know of him about him. Yeah. yeah you know he had that discrepancy with alpha mega you know, mm, Alpha Omega, yeah, yeah. whatever people want to call it, say they say mm-hmm. some say he snitch, some yeah. say he lied. Yeah. I don't, I don't get into all that right, aspect right, right. of it, but you know, um, yeah, Ali man. was a major player, man. He went, you know, he was a co- college basketball standout. Okay. Then um, injuries prevented him from going into the NBA, doing all he wanted to do. But mm. I tell you a, a great story that's included in the show. I give y'all a little glimpse of where I'm going with this. I tell you two. But first of all, Ali, um, in the early 90s, there was an expansion team, the Charlotte Hornets mm. in the NBA. He was in the trials. He made the final cut as a point guard. And he was going to be their starting point guard. They were like, man, you got all the tools we need. You're a bad boy. But they looked over. They said, but that little guy that's five foot three, he's going to sell tickets. We know we're not winning no championship no time soon. So we got to roll with him because he's going to sell tickets. That little five foot three guy, of course, is Muzzy (laughs) Bow. So I'm like, it's it's rich with stories. Like, Mm. I'll tell you another story. Um. We're going to say Iron Mike mm. was at Magic City one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my dude was hungry. Mm. And he got to dance and stuff. He's like, you know, uh, where do y'all have to eat this time tonight? Where can we go eat? So the dancer was like, well, yeah. we, this is when the beautiful would be open late, like 3 okay, or 4 okay. in the morning on uh-huh, the beautiful yeah. restaurant. So I'm like, we can go to the beautiful restaurant. He's like, okay, well, tell all the girls they can come to the beautiful restaurant. <laughs> Hey, that's my all-time favorite boxer, so I'm not clowning. Mine too. No, no, mine yeah, too. that's my yeah, dog. I like, love Mike. Yeah, it's like y'all quick. Uh, yes. <laughs> Most electrifying guy I ever seen put on yeah, gloves. But so yeah. he took the girls to the beautiful. I think he emptied out the club. Oh, shit. And so Magic Knight Bruni, the owner of Magic City, went to the club and saw... All his girls know him. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> so he found out where they was. This man lined up a whole bunch of limousines, pulled up at the beautiful. He said, hey, if you want a job tomorrow, you better get your A up, get in these limos. He's like, don't you ever, ever leave my establishment again. I don't care who come in here. I don't oh. care if it's Jesus. So I'm like, it's just stories like that. It's so yeah, rich. Yeah. We also covering the freak Nick. Got to. Yeah. And like, it's so much. It's more that meets the eye when it's concerning the freak Nick. Yeah. Like, a lot of hustlers played a major part in freak Nick because they used it as a front mm-hmm. to, you know, transport and mm-hmm. move stuff. So, I'm going to tell you, there's no story like this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm a avid tv watcher i love snowfall yeah. power all these great shows yeah. even power book too i love them all right but 96 is gonna be in the league of its own hmm. man just i'm 
visualizing now. Like, I'm ready to watch mm -hmm. it now. Like, <laughs> and shout out to my boy, yeah, my man. big homie, big boy. Okay, so um, how do you how did you come about getting in contact with Big Boy and uh, working, possibly getting Big Boy to work with you and all that? Like, uh, how, how did that happen? I leave a car. <laughs> yeah, I <was> like, <laughs> um, I wrote it out. Mm. He was like, it's ready. He was in love with the story. Mm. He was like, okay, what do we do now? Who do you want to take it to? Mm. I had a list of people, but at the top of that list was Big Boy from Outcast. Mm. Just something about Big. I was like, him and Dre wrote the soundtrack for that era. Mm -hmm. So I, I just mm -hmm. felt like it'd be that much more powerful. And he's a hell of an actor, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. So I was I like, I was like, well, here's my list. But he was like, you want Big? We'll get Big. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks later, we in a meeting with Big. Mm -hmm. Big love the story. Mm -hmm. And, you know, He's originally from Savannah. I went right, to Savannah right. State. Right, right. And so, and then I also, I, I included a little Savannah history in it. Mm. Cause you know, that was the first stop before the Miami boys came up here. Mm. So I was like, we can pay homage to your home too. You know, you know, you're a Atlanta dude, but you're a Savannah dude too. So, right, right, right. and he, he was just like, let's do it. And so, yeah, now that's that's big. You know what I'm saying? Um, what give you the, the motivation to to want to put all these Atlanta stories into your film? Like, what's your motivation for it? I just love my city. I love yeah. where I'm from, uh -huh. but I'm not. I refuse to be put in a box though, because it's my mind ranges so much further. Right, 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 right. So my wife can tell you, like, man. Um, I write some sci-fi, supernatural, <laughs> yeah, he's superhero. Got a, he's got like, an eclectic mix of material. And, yeah. You know, I think it's cool that he can kind of jump between, you know, what he loves and what he knows, yeah. um, you know, from lived experience. Right. And then say, mm -hmm. hey, this is where my mind, what if we had this? What if we thought of this? Yeah. And he'll take it into a story, or I dreamed about this. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, this would be a dope, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, every year he surprises me with something else. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, that's dope, you know, no, or that's man. cooler. And then I'll ask follow up questions and he'd be like, you know, so I, I think that we kind of bounce ideas off of each other on certain things. Yeah. Like I say, so where are you going with that? You know, yeah. or, you know, what are you doing with that? And he's like, I don't know yet. Or he'll come and say, what do you think about this or this right, name? And right, I'll right. say, okay, yeah, yeah, that sounds up. Or, nah, that ain't it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's beautiful yeah. having a partner that you yeah. can do that with yeah, and yeah. share that with. Be honest with you. You know there ain't no tour motives. You know that they're going to keep it real. Like, if they clear it, they're like, okay, it's good. She yeah. said, nah, ain't it? Yeah, ain't it. I then she's to... talented as well. Okay. So. Yeah. yeah, I think that I want him to represent his best self. You know what I mean? I know that we're human and we that won't always be the case, but right. in most cases, you know, when you can, you know, he he's so creative. It's like, you know, you want to display a, a mind like that, a creative mind like that. So I think it's dope. And I, you know, I have my own different level of creativity. Like I'm a craftsy person or um, like I see your presses over there and I know what to do with them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, I have a different level, but his like creative, like his writing is just like on another level. And I'm not just saying that because he's my husband, because I tell everybody like, if it wasn't hitting on anything, I wouldn't, I wouldn't endorse him as much as I do. I would love him, you know what I mean? And I would support him in what he wants to do, but I wouldn't be on the team like I am because I want to see him, you know, I want to see him and Ice Blue win, you know? And I think that's, you know, I know you asked him earlier how it is having me on the team. And when I saw just kind of like the inconsistencies of people that he was dealing with before, right. you know, his, that's no disrespect to them. Everybody has their life and trajectory, so I'm not, sh you know, shunning anybody or shaming anybody for, you know, what they decide to do. That's not where their heart is, and that's why I had to explain to him, like, it's not, that's not their passion, this not their stuff, you know what I mean? And so, um, obviously I'm married, <laughs> so I want, you know, I, I felt like bringing a certain you know, level of protection. You know what I mean? Not because I just like feel like he he's obviously a, a big dude. Like he can he can handle himself in a lot of ways. But certain things like if you don't have to or if that's something I do every day, you know, I don't mind because, you know, like I said, if there's some things I can take off of his plate, that's why you will see me. Um, AD, I'm, I'm in slime race too. 
Darn it, slime race. I, I'm in slime race too. I'm in a couple of different um, things. You know, wherever yeah. I'm needed, I try to insert myself and be the best. Very talented. The best role I can be. You know what I mean? In that moment. So if it's a COVID compliance officer on one set, you know, one day or, you know, food runner or whatever. You know what I mean? <clears throat> That's what happens when you're independent until you can, you know, have budgets and things like that to, to have people that you can hire. Um, and so I think having it family oriented, like, you know, we do. Um, my son know. also starring in slime races with okay. yeah. <laughs> He made his acting debut. He actually did really y'all, good. Y'all a real family hustle, man. Yeah. <laughs> we trying, man. Yeah. You know, we, you know, it could be more than one. So But we just really wanna change the narrative, man, because especially coming from where I'm come from, I used to say, um, too hood when I'm too artsy for the hood kids. Mm. But I'm too hood for the artsy kids. You know what I'm saying? And you know that feeling because you're a talented feeling. brother yourself. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's you a, feel like you're an anomaly. You know, but I'm on the same boat. <laughs> but on this path, on yeah. this journey, you'll come to find it. It's a lot of like-minded individuals like us. They just need that person to set the tone and inspire them. Like, yeah, I'm fr- I'm from the west side of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm I've seen it all. I've been through hell and back, but I like Game of Thrones. Right. I like Star Wars, bro. And there's Fox. nothing wrong with it. And I want to give a black perspective on it because I'm not the only black that enjoy all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? And I want to give my spin, my twist. I, I don't think we have enough stories like that. They try and throw us in a box and tell us what we like. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not for that. I'm not having it. So, like you, you'll see me do a few hood classics, and I love that, and I will continue to do them. But I'm going to veer away from that. That's and, not the only thing that's right. in the repertoire. Yeah, you, you're diverse. You know what I'm saying? You're just stuck in the box, so you can go from the streets of Atlanta, then turn around and do sci-fi. That, that's amazing. You like, do some yeah. hood sci-fi. Some hood sci-fi. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. So, 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 so we can all I'm relate to out the far out the box, and yeah. I'm I'm working on some yeah, stuff. Yeah. She'll tell you, man. I got some like if you sit there, and be like, what the hell? Where'd you come up with that? Like just some. Nah, but, nah your mind work like his mind and stuff. He's showing me too. I'm like, our mind work the same way. Like that's why we gotta take over the world together. Man. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm all for it. It's enough for all of us. Right. And we can and we better when we help each other. You know, I try and preach that as well because so many of us have that Willie Lynch mentality. Mm. You know, like crabs in a barrel trying to, no, yeah. it's enough for all of us. And, it man, be, one man. thing I admire about, you know, I don't, don't want to get out of line on them, but like yeah. the Caucasian race, yeah. they can hate you, but they'll still do business with you. <laughs> That's a fact. They can hate your yeah. goods, everything you stand for, yeah. but they know. They can make money with you. They, or they can make something. They can create something with you. Yeah, yeah. Because they respect your position in that. So, you know. No, that's true, man. Uh, like I say, if, even in our, our own city, we need to come together because, you know what I'm saying, we, you know, from here, you need, you know, coming together is big. Like, you know, a lot of people want to just compete, you know, but it ain't all about competing. It's the coming together makes something great. Like, people get mad that LeBron... He joined, um, he, he joined, what, uh, Wade and Boston. Yeah, with Miami. They came together. <laughs> yeah. And Matt and KD, they joined, you know, and, and, and the end goal was get a ring. And that's what I they say, end goal is us, you know, is to make film, is to, to leave our legacy. So. Imagine yeah. if we, like, had the collective mindset instead of the competitive mindset mm. for most things. Exactly. You know? Like, that's, that's you know, fun. what could have been accomplished if people huh. weren't trying to, you know, compete with compete, each other rather mm. than come together, like you said. I right. think it's mm. really important um, as, you know, black men to display huh. that collaborative effort yeah, yeah. And, and show what products of that can, you know, be. Because um, mm. I don't think there's enough of it, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think that we're in a society that promotes selfishness and, mm. you know, self-driven purpose. And, you know, right, and right, I think right. it's important to strive to be your better self. But right, right. You, you don't do that on your own. You have people along the way <clears throat> mm. to help you.